Team USA just, I don't know how to put it. They fell flat on their face. The reality is, is that the world has taken notice. The world has been going about the business of catching up. Some of the most elite players in the game today, um, obviously, are players from uh, across, the, across the ocean. They didn't have a roster that was equipped to win on this level, even in an NBA-style game against a bunch of guys that they knew. This was a game that should have favored them, but it just didn't. And so they're really going to have to examine what needs to be done going into next year in Paris. Bring me everyone. What do you mean everyone? Everyone! What a very interesting development we have ourselves here today. A big thank you to you all for tuning in. You see the title of this video, but before we get into that, I want to applaud LeBron for using his Legion powers for good this time. His ability to influence many different players across the NBA to galvanize support for whatever cause he wants to represent, it's unmatched. When I first heard this news, I was delighted. I was elated. I was overjoyed. You want to know why? Who else you want to play with? Um, in today's game, Steph Curry. Whoop, whoop. That is the solitary reason why I'm excited for this. I've been dying to see these two play together for so long. Those all-star games where they were on the same team, that's not good enough. Those are hors d'oeuvres. I want the whole enchilada, the full course meal that we deserve. And what better place to eat this meal than the Olympics? I mean, in actuality, this is the only feasible place that we can get this. Unlike that horrible, horrendous, disgusting rumor that LeBron was going to join the Warriors way back when. But ooh. Ugh, I can't even talk about it. I shudder at the thought of it. The very hairs on my arm are standing up. Can you believe that Curry has never been on the Olympic team ever? Never, ever? Never, ever, ever. So to have the both of them league defining players on the same team at the same time, this is akin to the 2008 Redeem team. You had both Kobe and LeBron in their prime at the peak of their powers. With the Dream Team, however, Michael, of course, is Michael, but Larry Bird was on the back half of his career. He wasn't the same. He had the back issues and the injury, and Magic was kind of out the league, and then he'd come back for this. Although seeing Magic and Larry play together is something that I know many back then must have been just oogling and ogling about, because that, that's just incredible. Wish I was alive to experience it. Now, Curry and LeBron aren't exactly in their quote-unquote prime at the moment, but this is something similar to having a LeBron and Kobe, like the two, the one and two people that everybody has been going back and forth, or younger Larry and younger Magic both teaming up at the same time. However, while this does sound great and I get to see these two people play alongside each other with a myriad of other great talents, this team is by no means a lock to do damage in the Olympic Games. This team is metal worthy. This is at least a silver team. Anything less than silver is unacceptable. Why do I say that? Why am I not? Oh my God, they should win gold. They are going to destroy everyone because they're not, number one. And the main reason being is because a lot of these people are older now. LeBron will be 40 by the time these games take place. Curry will be 36 or 37. Durant will be getting older as well as Draymond. Stephen A. Smith would rather focus in on Davis being the issue. I don't want to hear nothing about no damn Anthony Davis representing Team USA. There is merit for that argument, of course. But are we going to forget the fact that Kevin Durant has missed over 130-something odd games these past few years? Are we going to lumbast over the fact that Kyrie is somewhat injury prone and misses games? Are we going to ignore a diminished Draymond because he is diminished? Add in Davis as well as a now injury prone LeBron and Curry is a bit older. I won't say he's injury prone necessarily, but he has had some injuries that have taken him out of the rotation and he's missed extended periods of time throughout the season. I remember he was an MVP contention about a year or two ago, but due to an injury, he just disappeared. And then you add in great but disappearing act players, Houdini-ass players, being Devin Booker and Jason Tatum, who can play great two games and then just play like lesser versions of themselves. That's not a team that I have a lot of faith in. This team is not steamrolling over a bunch of teams now anymore. With this current iteration of basketball that we have in this day and age where you've got all these international teams who have gotten better and didn't even have some of their best players in this FIBA 
and you're going to tell me that this team is going to steam it. No, 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 absolutely not. That Serbian team is legit. This German team is legit. They got that schnauzer in them. And I'm by no means selling Team USA short. It's just that these opposing teams from abroad are younger in key areas, aren't as injury prone, and they're empowered and motivated from seeing Team USA's downfall and being unable to even meddle. So they've got all the confidence in the world going into Paris. Team USA is going to have to take care of their bodies. They're going to have to be locked in after a long NBA season. If some of these players make it to the playoffs or the finals, you're going to immediately be going over there for Paris. You're going to be going over there in the summer. You're going to have to play again. No matter how great Curry, LeBron, and Durant are, they are human and this will take a toll on them. The only way I see this being a thing is if they've completely relegated themselves to competing for US title or just getting the gold medal and nothing else. There's nothing on the horizon for them. I get that sentiment from LeBron because LeBron will be 40. He will be like the oldest person on the team. He knows this is his last appearance. And I'm pretty sure Curry He's just looking at it as, well, I haven't been here before and I want to do this. Curry could possibly still keep playing for another five years. This may not be his last one. He's a shooter. He can kind of play a little bit longer. But LeBron is not seeing another Olympics. Durant is not seeing another Olympics. Draymond isn't. And it is really sad when you think about it because we're just not going to be able to have the privilege and the pleasure of seeing them compete against the rest of the world in the sport of basketball. And a lot of us have grown up seeing that. We're just used to it. And there's going to be time enough for another generation to come and take their place. However, as I've said in these other videos, the future of the NBA is in great hands, just not domestic ones. The NBA has been practically invaded by all manner of other countries and their players and people from across the globe coming here to play at an elite level and dogging the hell out of some of the competition over here that we've deemed as the best place for basketball. That's unbeatable. Nobody can see us in a one-on-one -on -one or nobody can see us in a 5v5, but they've been seeing us and they've been talking to their friends about it. The primary advantage that Team USA has going for them is the wisdom, the experience, the know-how, the high basketball IQ that is unrivaled. Not many of these other international teams are on the same level as it comes to that. LeBron alone provides you with infinite knowledge of basketball IQ. Now you add Curry into that, Draymond is underrated when it comes to basketball IQ. Then you've got Durant. Though diminished they somewhat may be, they can all fall back on that infinite aptitude for the game that's unrivaled no matter where you go in the world. The last I heard of LeBron wanting to join Team USA again was a few years back where he said he wouldn't do it again unless Greg Popovich was the coach. I think that would be the best decision for this team going forward and a close second being Eric Spolstra. No offense to Steve Kernall, but it's all about what you've done for me lately, and lately you kind of shit the bed with the coaching and going on with FIBA. So if you look at Popovich and Spolstra, they've been able to do infinitely more with less. They've proven themselves to be elite coaches among elite coaches, and I think they can bring the best out of Team USA, especially on the defensive end, and no nonsense time. Kerr is going to go down as a great all-time coach, but he seems to me a coach that's more dependent on the talent that exists on the roster rather than him bolstering up reserve hidden potential or making them better. Not saying that he can't, I just don't think that's a strong suit. As you have a lot of people say he inherited the system that was made by Mike Brown and all those other people were part of Warriors training staff. And there was already an identity of that team there. And then Kerr stepped in, but the Warriors were already on the rise. So do the Warriors still do what they do with or without Kerr? I think the Warriors are still the Warriors. Maybe a ring or two difference because Kerr did some great adjustments, but that's an argument that you can have. I just have more faith in Popovich and Spolstra. So in conclusion, I'm still immensely excited for this team, for the prospect of seeing LeBron and Curry play against each other. I already know international audiences are going to go crazy over just seeing Curry play. Just, I mean, like, I mean, there's just no real one player you can compare him to shooting a three from half court or turning around before it goes in and looking at the audience and doing a shimmy and stuff that eat that up. That's amazing. That's incredible to them. So, yeah, I'm, I'm extremely 
I'm looking forward to that. I'm salivating at the chance. And then seeing LeBron dish him assists, create open looks for him. Curry's never played alongside somebody like that. And then you throw in all the other players in the mix. Amazing. Draymond may bring the ball up and stuff. Just incredible. I'm not going to bet against LeBron or Curry or Durant like that. But at the same time, one must have appropriate fear now in competing internationally, as Greg Popovich had stated. Believe these teams can beat you. It will not be a cakewalk like it has been in the past. So tell me what you guys think about what I've said. Do you think I'm being too cynical or you think Team USA is going to just stomp everybody internationally? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. Like and subscribe if you're new and I shall see you on the next one.